What is up, nerd friends? We're going to take a quick look at the OTA, the XR8 SCT, and the all new HW Link V2. OTA is the new Bluetooth connection device that allows you to use the HW Link V2 app with various speed control models in the XE run lineup, as well as the Max series and the Platinum series. You do want to check your speed control's official listing in the instruction manual for what programming devices it's going to work with. The OTA will work with any speed control that worked with the old Wi-Fi Express or the LCD programming box as well. The OTA is kind of meant as a benchtop tuning device. Some people like to leave them installed in the cars and drive around with them. I'm not a fan of that personally i like to remove it every time it can be done it's just not the greatest thing to do the programmers generally all of them they plug into the fan port on your speed control so leaving them installed you got to get a y harness and in addition to that if something happens to your car like a catastrophic failure gets stolen or whatever it's just one more device that you got to deal with replacing outside of that the wires on the ota are all black but it does in fact matter which way you plug them in and how do you tell there's some etchings right here on the edge of the case that are maybe hard to see in this video but you'll see it when you, you get it there's a a negative, a plus, and a squiggly line, and those line up with the markings that are on the fan port of your speed control. I've already unplugged the fan from this one. It's connected to a very basic two-cell LiPo, and this is an XE Run XR8 SCT. It plugs in on this particular one with those brass pins facing towards the speed control, but make sure you double check the markings that are on the top of it. If you have not calibrated your speed control to your radio yet, done the what I call calibration process where it learns the neutral, the throttle, and the brakes, unplug it from the receiver. If the speed control is getting any information from the receiver, it won't allow you to get into programming. So if this process doesn't work, just unplug your speed control from the receiver and that'll usually take care of it. Okay, to get things started with the battery connected, you turn the speed control on, OTA light comes on, and then you touch the little link icon that's right there in the corner and that will get the process started. It opens up this menu, you touch your HWBLE, or it'll have the various speed controls have different names there. And then once that connects, if you if it asks you for a password, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It also shows that on the screen. To get into the speed control, you go into parameters. You can do firmware updates here with the firmware update button. You can view if your speed control has data logging, you'll view it here. Not all models have data logging, so a lot of folks think that this adds data logging to the speed control. It does not. If it doesn't have the real-time data output, it doesn't add any of that stuff either. So uh, don't be fooled. Check your speed controls listings. If it has data logging or real time, then you'll know if that's supposed to work or not. And then the settings area is actually the settings for the app itself. So to change speed control settings, you go to parameters and it'll connect to the speed control. Takes a little bit of time here. And we are in. Once you get in, you can see all the speed controls, various settings. You can change the profile. You can rename the profile. You can reset your profile, import, export. And then most importantly, when you make changes to anything in here, you have to hit save as well. If you want to disconnect from the speed control, you hit, can hit the little link icon there and you can check for firmware updates once you're in, uh, in here as well with the little chip icon that's in the upper corner. Let's talk about the settings. Running mode is where you turn on your reverse. All of the racing models, they come with the reverse turned off. So we get that call all the time. Why, why doesn't my reverse work it's because it's turned off you have to jump in here and turn that on lipo cells and the cutoff voltage are exactly that it's for your low voltage safety for lipo usage you can do auto calculation or you can set it to the actual cell so if you run various voltages it allows you to not have to worry about that it'll do the per cell cutoff i'm not a big fan of that i tend to run all my vehicles on like one voltage it's been an RC wives tale for a while that you can take a vehicle and run it on two different voltages and it's going to be awesome. Usually it's just awesome on one and just okay on the other or very hot. And then you can also set the actual voltage cutoff and this is the total voltage, obviously, not per cell. So if you have a specific voltage that you want to cut off at, uh, this, is, this is where you can do that. Or if you need to turn it off, obviously you can do it in here as well. Thermal protection for the ESC and for the motor, the motor thermal protection kind of only works with hobby wing motors because we're the only ones that have that same thermal device inside the motor and that's the main reason the second or the next section motor rotation it changes the forward direction of the motor so if you're got a reverse drivetrain vehicle you can change that there only the xe run xr8s and the xr10 pro g2 offer motor rotation in censored mode it's fyi BEC voltage is the power to your servo and receivers. It is adjustable to 6 volts or 7.2. Max brake force and max reverse force are exactly that. It's how hard the brakes or the reverse are. Some folks don't want full reverse or full brakes, so you can turn that down here. Start mode punch is how linear the throttle is. If 
you got weak batteries or real tricky, tricky, slick conditions, you can turn the punch down to make the throttle kind of have a little bit of delay from when you, you ratchet on it. If you want it linear, you turn it all the way up. That's number nine. Drag brake is your brakes when you let off the throttle. So like you roll into a corner and you go to just go to neutral it'll apply brakes while you're in neutral it's adjustable up and down more for track applications again you definitely don't want to use drag brakes if you're using drag cars like having the cars go immediately to brakes from that high rpm is really bad so don't don't do that for drag race setups it's more for track applications and down here we have coast neutral range and the drive mode so let's talk about coast for a second if you're in a real slick condition where every time you let off the throttle the car wants to spin out coast allows you to add a little bit of run on to the motor so for let's say dirt oval applications they, they would use that a bit for the most other things you don't use it very often neutral range now this one's kind of important for some folks if you got an older radio or you notice that your drag brakes are inconsistent your neutrals inconsistent maybe once you turn on the reverse that's kind of inconsistent that doesn't work every time increase your neutral range what it is it's the zone or the dead band if you will between the throttle and the reverse slash brakes so it opens up that that zone that the speed control is looking for for safety and drive mode, this speed control can run sensorless motors, or if you have non-hobby wing motors that don't have ultra clean sensor information coming out of them, you can put it into hybrid mode. When you are in full sensored mode, you're only allowed to use turbo. When you're in hybrid mode, which works on sensored motors as well, you can also use the boost timing. It's a little confusing, but it's done for some of the safeties on the speed control and the, the applications that these are made for. Next so. up in the lineup is the data record. This speed control is freshly updated before I did this, so there's no information but you can see the the last data from the speed control that's in there and again if your speed control doesn't have data recording th this isn't going to show you anything if, if you are to make changes don't forget you got to hit save and then disconnect unplug the wi-fi express and then you're back in action Tap that, it disconnects, you can back out of the app. And there you have it, thanks for tuning in. If you do have any questions, don't forget, you can always send us an email directly, northamerica at hobbywing.com. See you next time.